What is going on, everybody? Hope you are having a good week so far. It's podcast time. And this week we have the one and only Meg Ward. Meg, uh, I came across her when Patrick Toppin asked if she could remix uh, my Less Rave record. I was like, sounds great. Banging. She did a crazy remix and sm smashed it. Um, and ever since then, I've kind of just seen her name just pop up everywhere. Always, every time I turn on Radio 1, she's always being played. Um, and she's just a, a great person as well. A great producer, a great person. And it's so nice to kind of see things really taken off for her. So I decided to get on the show, had a great conversation with her. She's amazing. And I, I cannot wait to see her like absolutely smash it over the next few years and kind of turn into something or turn into a household name in in the scene. Um, so without further ado, Meg Ward. Meg Ward, what's cooking? Hello. How's it going? Yeah, I'm not bad. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty tired today, but you've just woken up as well. You <laughs> just said. <laughs> Hello. How is it? Uh, How's life? On the night shift. <laughs> yeah, what is it you do? Um, so I'm working as a mental health support worker at the minute. Oh, dope. So, yeah, it's quite it's quite intense. I only do two shifts a week, and it's uh, it's quite full on. <laughs> yeah, what is that like in a hospital or is it in a care home or? Um, it's like a supported living facility. Okay. So they like it's their own tenancy and yeah. stuff, but they just need help with day to day things and stuff. They're so lush though. They're so lush. It's just uh, hectic. Every yeah. day is different as well, which is always the best. Yeah, I feel that. My parents are in a drug and alcohol rehab. Um, so I used yeah. to work there um, years ago. Well, I still help them out uh, during COVID at the moment um, just by like picking clients up and stuff. But yeah, you're right. It's kind of like a every day is a different day. It never gets boring. Yeah. It's, really. nice, it's nice to yeah. give back though, right? It's nice to help. It is, it is. I feel like I'll always be doing something like that, to be honest. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's just, I don't know, it's just something I've always enjoyed. It's nice. I think it's like when you give something and you give it and you get it back at the same time. It's like karma in it and stuff. Yeah, I think also it's that, it sounds kind of selfish, but helping people helps you. Oh, 100%. And yeah. it's not, you're not getting, like, it. you're not getting anything back material it's not materialistic it's like brain energy like brain money it's so much more in it yeah. than material yeah and it's frustrating as hell sometimes um because you're just like some people just don't get it and they're just not and you wish you you want it more than they want it right um mm. but i guess that's just the joys of helping people yeah definitely how, yeah how, a lot of my service users are drug and alcohol and stuff okay. and it's uh it's um it's quite yeah. difficult a lot of the time to be fair but they're all lush and they're all just on their own journey yeah and it's yeah it is isn't it and it's it's amazing to be able to the, i guess the thing that i look at is that everyone everyone that's kind of going through issues is like was a child at one point and it's like everyone has their their own issues and everyone's had a different path and a different upbringing and and, and kind of have has a different journey and I think it's society is it's so easy to judge people in society and like kind of put them all in like put people with mental health issues in like this like thing that they're all fucking crazy people if you know what I mean but realistically they're kind of some of the most intelligent people in the community and and can give the most if yeah. they just get that bit of help yeah um, 100% 100% a lot of the people as well I don't know it's just uh you can't judge people on their like on their who, no. who they are at the minute because you don't know what's happened to them in the yeah. past or anything so it's yeah it's really refreshing i only started it in november oh that's cool yeah what made it's you get been, into it um so i decided like june last year to do a master's okay um in psychology how oh, dope but um like it was like a conversion course because I, I did a completely different undergrad okay and uh yeah i just I, I just i just set myself on this sort of different path like career path and everything and then tune like i, I were expecting tunes to take a good like 10 years to yeah. be able to like go full time and stuff mm. but it seems to have gone quite well so <laughs> <laughs> mate you're smashing it um yeah. it's so nice to see uh yeah you're on like 
you're everywhere. <laughs> Obviously, you're not everywhere because of because of COVID. But I feel like if there wasn't COVID, you would be. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that's the case when it's over as well. Yeah. How did it start? Like, I cause I don't know anything about you. All I know yeah. is that you remixed my record and it was dope. And thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, um, thank you for having me on that. It and was... and also, I've like caught up on your record slightly that you've released and. Obviously, you get a lot of support from Radio 1, which is amazing because I literally, every time I turn it on, it seems to be Meg Ward is playing, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's That's mad. Lush. Like, you, you you kind of, like, have this amazing, like, persona online and kind of seem, like, pretty cool and chill. And, like, <laughs> where did it all start? Like, what happened? Um, or how did it start? I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It, well, to be fair, I do know. It's, I went through. I went to uni in Newcastle, um, yeah. 2016, okay. I think I moved there. How old are you now? Yeah. 23. Oh, young. Ben. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben. I feel like a grandmother this year's <laughs> aged me. <laughs> Mate, I've gone so grey this year. It's like oh, yeah. fucking wild. I've been going grey for a while, but I think the minute lockdown hit, I just turned silver fox. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> it's not good. Rocking it though, rocking <laughs> it. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. So it's 2016, went to university in Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know, I just got involved in the scene there. I started working as a promoter mm. at Cosmic Ballroom. Okay. Uh, I think Bahamian. I played there. Yeah, I think I've promoted one of the events <laughs> that you played at, you know. I never play in the UK and I played, that was like 2018. Yeah, I definitely promoted that. Really? It was, uh, was it like a day party as well or something? It, or you was playing I on the played, night? Uh, yeah, I played the night. Um, yeah. It was pretty messy. It was good fun. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sick venue. Yeah, I started promoting there, uh, working for him. And I don't know, I just sort of fell in love with rave and the scene and stuff. And yeah. dance music as a yeah. whole. Like, So is that your first like introduction when you, like 2016? into like dance music um yeah i'd say prior to that like i went to leeds fest when i was like yeah. 16 mm. seen annie mac on dance 10 yeah. uh gorgon city like the classics yeah, uh, yeah. and fell in love with it then to be fair but like it really developed when i started seeing club culture a bit more like yeah. when i was old enough to go to clubs yeah um yeah, and just seeing it all and just being like, whoa, this is like a whole new world. Like, you can be who you want to be here, and it's mint. <laughs> yeah, it is true, isn't it? It's kind of like there's not many forms in society where you can just, like, completely escape normal life yeah. and kind of get away. If you go to the right places as well, like, you can really just be whoever you fucking want. I know. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. So when did you start writing and, and when did you actually start playing? Oh, yeah. So um, I was working as a promoter for about six months at uni. Mm. And then I decided to, I was like, I was, you know what? I'm always on the orcs at home and stuff. <laughs> and with my mates, I'll buy, a, <laughs> I'll buy a pair of decks and see how it goes. Yeah. And do you know what? I just I, I just proper like I, I watched a few videos on like on what buttons to use and mm. stuff. And then I just just got my head down and just, just got mixed it. like just did loads of random tunes, mixed for loads of random tunes and just got proper into it. And yeah. I, yeah. Love and then that. I started doing like, like house parties in Jesmond in Newcastle, <laughs> um, on ironing boards. <laughs> <laughs> Decks on ironing boards. <laughs> Classic. And yeah, I, I, ever since then, like, I think to be fair, it was one of my friends, uh, who was starting up a new event, um, mm. And it was at an house party and I went to college with him and school with him and stuff before that. He was like, Meg, you're mint on decks. I want to <laughs> have you play at my first event. Uh, and I'd only ever used a little controller at this yeah. point. And then um, it was at World Headquarters, his first event, okay. supporting Ben Pierce as well. Yeah, yeah. So it was a bit like, okay, yeah, I'll do this. <laughs> Chucked into the D-Ben big time. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> And uh, I was only opening, so it was only really my mates there at the start. Just yeah, you pure... play play for your mates in the in the bouncers, isn't it? But it's yeah, the best. Yeah. That's the, that's where you learn, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was the first time on CDJs as well, so it's like. <laughs> Thank so God for scared. that sync button. Thank God for that <laughs> sync button. <laughs> like this, trying to use pitch fade. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. And then and then did it just kind of snowball from there? So write, yeah. writing tunes and then kind of moving forward with that. 
Yeah, so I worked, I worked as like a promoter for my friends event mm. and then a promoter for Cosmic and Ill Behaviour. Yeah. And as soon as I played that event, the promoter at Ill Behaviour runs her events were like, Meg, I didn't know you DJ'd. Like, come on, let's, like, let's have you play Room 2 Cosmic. And then I think it, I can't remember my first one. Uh, I think it might have been Big Miss. Okay. Oh, I'm not too sure. But yeah, it was upstairs in Room 2 and we were just playing loads of like, classic house tunes yeah. i think that's what i learned on to be honest like night is house and stuff mm. that's what my mates always used to love <laughs> like it's like rave culture in newcastle is like huge yeah like and party culture in general yeah, i think I yeah fucking love a rave <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like all the mainstream people who would like go out to like Go for Trebs and that and, and Bijou and what have you. Loves Geordie Shaw. They still love a rave. Yeah, they all do. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's proper mad. But I guess that's good. It's just Northerners just love to party. Even in Scotland, like up in Scotland, they, they're mental up there. Same with Ireland, I guess. It's good fun though. So how did you start writing beats? Um, I don't actually know how I started, you know. I just, uh, I got Ableton, uh, like the intro version. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna have a play about on it. I think I got the trial. Like, I got the trial thinking if I liked it, I'll, I'll carry on. It's yeah. not one of them. I've always been massively into music. Like mm. I've, I, I used to play trumpet when I was little. And no I way. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> just get the trumpet out when you're mid set. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still yet to put a trumpet sample in my song. <laughs> I think Timmy Trumpet absolutely destroyed that and kind of like fucked it up for everyone. <laughs> I don't know if, do you know Timmy Trumpet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, what song is it that? Oh. It's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> it makes everyone want to die. What is it? I don't um, know, but it's like, have you seen that video? Is it that video of that kid banging on that um, oven? Or no, something? what's that? I don't know. I think he's playing that song. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm on it now. Timmy, what's his... Oh, he's... To be fair, he gets, like, mad streams, so I don't know what's like. The biggest one. That. Oh, my God, he's done a remake of Mad World. <laughs> that is awful. That's... Timmy Trumpet, shame on you. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> um. So, yeah, you just started writing beats and... Cracked on. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I just started. I think I just watched a few videos on Ableton. Similar to the way I like learn how to DJ. Yeah. I had to look on YouTube. Like, I had to look at what does what yeah. and sort of just try Worked to like play with the sounds and just get my own feel for it. YouTube's amazing, isn't it? You can literally yeah. learn anything. It is. That's how I learn guitar as well. Like, can you play the guitar? Yeah, not like <laughs> amazing. Winging it. <laughs> Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> What else do you need to know t on the guitar? That's all you need to learn. Literally. Exactly, exactly. Like, party trick, just get the guitar out, play Wonder Hall, <laughs> buy it. Everyone's happy. That's all you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Nobody else wants any other song but Wonderwall on a, an acoustic guitar. <laughs> I remember when I used to live in Ibiza and the walk back to my place and there was always a guitarist, like, and every night he, he was playing Wonder Wall as I walked past. And it was just a bunch of drunk English people. And the only thing they would ever ask him to play was Wonder Wall. <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> he that was like, so poor destroying. guy. <laughs> but he seemed to enjoy it and he made money. So, yeah, I guess fairs. <laughs> thanks, thanks to Oasis for that. Have you seen that documentary, Supersonic? I've not. Mate, you have to check it out. I've like watched like a really small part of it because I walked in on my housemate like watching it like a like a year ago yeah. and it, was, it looked really good and I was creasing at some of the parts they're just mental they're just icons aren't they they're just such different personalities as well it's just fucking mentalist like <laughs> mad to think that they were that famous in two years and then nothing else they just stopped and you're just like how <laughs> It's actually wild, that to be fair. Yeah, they got they were like the biggest band for two years, and they were like, and then pretty much stopped everything. And you're like, what the fuck? But like, then they're still like, the tunes are still so iconic so, now. So like unbelievable. I feel like I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we don't really get music that iconic anymore, especially no, bands. Don't. Yeah, I agree. I, I used why. to be really into bands as well. Yeah, I feel like the bands are just kind of like, 
I feel like radio or mainstream radio is just like fodder. Like mm. every, I sound like a well old person right now, but every song sounds the same. And it's yeah, like, him and him and him. yeah, like <laughs> mumble rap or like some awful, I don't know, like just fodder. And I'm just yeah, like, someone on a guitar. Yeah. And then I listened to the new Kings of Leon album mm. the other day. Have you heard it? No, I've not. It's fucking great. Is it? Yeah, it's really good. And I was like, why don't, why don't they play this on radio? They used to, mm. if you know what I mean. Why don't they play like really good rock bands on radio? Yeah, it's because it's like not, it's not like they're popular anymore, is it? Like it's not, yeah, because pop- yeah, I, I guess that's it. Like when they were popular, I was like 15. Mm. And now I'm 30 and now I'm old as fuck. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> oh, it's wild. And then you look at the charts or something in the charts, and at the moment you're like, "Oh my god!" Like, how? Who's listening to this stuff? And then you re- <laughs> and then you realize it's TikTok, and you're like, "Ah, oh, okay, now it makes sense." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you on TikTok? I'm obsessed with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your TikTok? Uh, it's just Meg Ward. Do you do, you do stuff Ward. on it? Nah. <laughs> oh, you don't. I've got yeah. it and like done a few things like years okay. ago before it was TikTok. Musically. Like, musically, <laughs> yeah. Did you have musically? I, I downloaded it. I remember downloading it and I was, it was just loads of like 15 year olds dancing and miming. So I was like, right. Yeah, I guess it was a bit weird. Meg.ward. There we go. I'm following okay, like, you. <laughs> Mint. <laughs> I've just got so many like, at the minute, though, I'm obsessed with recipes on TikTok, and I've just got loads of like food things that I, on my for you page. Oh, really? And, yeah, and then li- just loads of stupid videos as well. So you're like, into cooking? Yeah, I love I love cooking. Come on, talk to me. I love cooking <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't know. I just love. I'm I'm veggie though, so Ooh, I don't know. We shouldn't yeah. be talking. <laughs> 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 no, there's I some think, amazing veg vegetarian dishes. Some yeah, amazing. I'm really keen to make some like seitan from scratch. Um, seitan. Yeah. What's it's this? Like, it's like wheat wheat gluten protein. Okay. So you, you just make it from uh, like okay. dough. Yeah. Is it um, like a meat substitute or what people would call yeah, meat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like really different texture. You can like mm. shape it to make it different textures and stuff. It's um. It's really nice as well, to be fair, because you can just season it the way you want. Yeah, but I think one of my friends, they, a couple, they own a few, like, they own, like, a fast food chain. It's called uh, Uwe. Mm. Um, and it started in Bristol. And they started it with just, like, it's like a burger, diner, American diner stuff. And then they did open a vegan one. And I think they do, like, I think they do, like, a chicken burger with that kind yeah. of stuff. It's pretty oh, good. Sounds lush. Yeah. It is pretty good to be fair. And they like deep yeah. fry it and everything. It just tastes Ooh. like a chicken burger. Oh, love it. There's loads of stuff like that in Leeds as well, to be yeah. fair. Leeds has got quite good for vegan stuff really? and veggie stuff. Yeah. It's so fashionable. Like, and I don't mean yeah, that in a is, horrible yeah. way. It, like, no, no. It goes out of fashion, but it is. Like, it started from California in LA, I mm. think. And I think it just, the culture just kind of came over here through the internet. Mm. And, there's just so many more options. I remember like if like even like five years ago in the UK, you'd go to a restaurant and there'd be like, if you're a vegetarian, you'd have to have like a goat's cheese salad or something like that. Mush- <laughs> mushroom risotto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I do, I've had too many of them. <laughs> I do love a mushroom risotto though. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. If it's good. Shit risotto is terrible though. It is. Really <laughs> bad. I've just started. Not- go on. No, I've I've not met a risotto before, you know. Have you not? I might have to met one, yeah. Well, I've I've just started a food show. Um, oh really? Yeah, I've just filmed like eleven episodes of a f- food for a food show that I'm starting. Oh sick! And uh, I've done mushroom risotto on one of them, so I'll send it to you. Oh mint! What type of mushrooms have you used? Porcini and shiitake. Mmm. Yeah, they're good. Mushrooms are amazing. They're the best. Like oyster mushrooms as well. You can use them as like fake meat as well, which is yeah. sick. They're like shred the. They're amazing. Mushrooms are just so good. Yeah, I, don't, I, yeah, I yeah. don't understand why people don't. I do understand why people don't like them, but I also don't because it's like yeah. they taste it's so annoying. good. Yeah, 
even eating them raw is like amazing. Mm. I I went and did like a a week in a like a restaurant. Um, it's like a restaurant hotel, and he, it's like this crazy Italian dude that just cooks. He kind of self taught himself, but it's it's not Michelin star, but it could be if if he would like wanted to. Yeah. Um, Fine dining and that. Yeah, and it's like it's it's like a hotel, so very small. So it's like eight tables every night, and th- that's it. Um, but he does this amazing thing with mushrooms. He gets like porcini mushrooms. I think it's porcini. No, chanterelle mushrooms. Ooh. Dehydrates them and then covers them in chocolate. What? Mate, they are fucking amazing. Is it like dark chocolate? Or yeah, is it... dark chocolate. Yeah. So it's like... So I couldn't imagine it with like a really sweet, no, sugary no. chocolate. It's like dark chocolate. So... It's yeah, it's super nice after like a dinner or like with coffee. Not Ooh. that I drink coffee, but it's yeah, it's unreal. I'll have to get him to. I'll, I'll get a picture of it and I'll send them over to you. But they're yeah, so good. But That's he ferments them first, so he you ferment them for about a week in like a fermenter, and then they like turn all like gooey and like they look disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it looks horrible. And then yeah, he dehydrates that and then it kind of turns into like a powdery kind of thing and then put covers it in chocolates. Oh, my God. So good. Mad. That's so creative as well. Like, who would think to do that? <laughs> yeah, his shit's amazing. Like, I, I, there's chefs. There's, there's cooks in there's chefs, isn't there? Yeah. And, like, one of, one of my mates is, like, quite a famous chef in America and some of the stuff he cooks is just, like mate like how did you think of that (laughs) but then again it's the same with music isn't it it's like true cooking up a beat (laughs) it's exactly the same it's like i'm sure people are like how the hell did meg ward make that record (laughs) 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 and i don't know i do it all the time like there's producers out there that i'm like how the fuck did they make that record like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, the amount of times that you listen to a song and it's like, how? <laughs> Who's your how? artist? Who's your like go-to artist every time that you're like, I give up. I'm never going to be as good as them. We all have one. Moby. Oh, yeah. Good shout. <laughs> good shout. He's yeah. fucking amazing. He's crazy. Crazy good. Yeah, he is. Who's yours? Maceo Plex. Oh, Fez. Yeah. That's next, like dark as well <laughs> it's, i i just uh i don't know how he does it <laughs> I, I can make all the sounds and i can yeah. make like everything like that but i just can't get can't get the feel that he gets he gets this like depth yeah that you're just like wow and yeah i rate him to be fair yeah he's well good but moby is like on another level no, never. <laughs> How good is his new album? Well, yeah, newest sick. album. So good. It reminded me of his kind of one of his like first albums, mm. like very like rave orientated. Mm. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's put a few albums out that I wouldn't say they're duff, but they're like. He's got a lot of ambient albums. And yeah, stuff on which here. I yeah. love to listen to. Absolutely yeah. love to listen to when I'm trying to sleep or when I'm like chilling. But yeah, his new album's amazing. It's next level. Yeah. What's uh what's plans for after COVID? Have you got shows coming in? I do. I do. And um That's amazing. Yeah. It's 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 really nice. But I, I I've not got an agent yet, so it's a bit hectic for me because I'm getting loads of e- like emails and what have you or mm. I'm trying to sort out my own things. So I need have to you get got an management. Agent sorted. I have just just I've I'm in a uh, trial period. Who you at the with? Minute. Uh, Palm Artists. Palm Artists, I've heard of them. Yeah, they're with um, my manager Georgina. She's, um, I think she's Gorgon's manager as well, Gorgon City. Okay, that's Palm. Palm. Yeah. Is it Palm Agency? Um, manage, uh, oh, Palm Artists, I Palm think. Palm Artists. Yeah. I've heard of them somehow. Yeah. That's dope though. Yeah, she's really helped me out so much. Like, I'm so, like, I didn't realise how unorganised I was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, bought, I bought a diary for the first time not long ago, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm actually 
being organized <laughs> <laughs> I've just sort of like always just said yes to everything and then yeah. forgot forgotten about things about or whatever else. and then like, it's got to the day I'm like oh god <laughs> no that makes sense I bought a book well I bought a, a book the other day I said the mm. other day about six months ago and I was like because I was kind of the same, I'm always pretty organized yeah but I would always like n- like be doing random things like cooking or like on a run and be like oh shit I need to do that and forget and then i'm like i don't write this down so i need to write it down and then actually like tick the shit off when it's done um and it saved my life yeah so much more productive so much more done when it's when it's that way which is great yeah i do that on my notes to be fair on my phone see i I tried notes i tried but i would never look at my notes yeah if you know what i mean to like do things and i i've got about a million to-do lists on my on my notes and i might never look at them whereas this is just there and it just like shouts at me and it's like i have to open it and write stuff down yeah yeah that's it's great though more real in it when it's like physical and you've written it down already yeah make sure you remember it more as well i swear like writing it i hate writing as well like yeah <laughs> my handwriting is like a fucking two-year-old oh so- mine's so bad <laughs> i want to find some let me find some Ooh. <laughs> wait <laughs> i can't wait for this oh it's horrific <laughs> that's not that bad but i get it it's 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 not the classic handwriting that you'd expect I that's don't mine know. uh see yours is similar yeah we're both pretty shit let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> but like i always thought g- this might be sexist but if this is kind of i pre- at school every girl had neat handwriting no, that's what I was trying to get at. Then I was right. like, it's not usual <laughs> that I don't have nice handwriting. <laughs> I really liked nice handwriting as well. And I could never do it at school. Yeah. It just sucked. My brother's got amazing handwriting and I was always super jealous. And then, yeah, but I just can't. Can't at all. Can't even think- read read it yeah I, I, I wanted to be a doctor when i was younger oh you would have smashed it then doctors can't yeah, handwrite for yeah. shit <laughs> <laughs> i think that's why my handwriting so bad because i conditioned myself to be a bad handwriter because i knew that doctors were yeah bad handwriters. they're <laughs> terrible aren't they you're just like what the fuck did you just write luckily for computers nowadays that they don't write much yeah yeah that's dope though with management um is it nice to just like have some somebody kind of fighting on your side a hundred percent it's been such a blessing at the minute because mm. um obviously we've doing dan that lockdown link up with dan on danny's show yeah um who are you doing it with who did you do it with was it um, hannah Han- hannah once yeah it was it was sick to be fair it was really fun That's dope. but doing that and like getting like loads of stuff back and forth yeah. um it was just easier for georgina to sort it and stuff and i don't know i can't wait to just like not have to re- reply to every single thing that I get, I, email or what have you. I think it's it's nice to have somebody to, this sounds awful, but it's meant in the best possible way, but have somebody that can like fight for you and say no. 100%. Because saying no is the most powerful thing ever. It um, is. And it sounds awful, but I think at the beginning, everyone wants to do everything which is understandable and you should, you should do everything and just to kind of be out there and get out and about. But there comes a point when you're like, well, is this like detrimental to my career or not? Um, And I think a lot of the time it is pretty detrimental um, and it can kind of, if, if you've got the right team, then it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And to be honest, like, obviously I'm, I'm I'm quite I'm really fresh into mm. the scene and stuff and I don't have a clue half the yeah. time. So it's nice to have somebody with like a bit of the wits about them and know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's nice, it's good. And I think like you you've you've got such a long career ahead of you. Like from an outsider, mm. like if you smash it the next couple of years, you're like on to an absolute winner. <laughs> you just gotta keep it up, mate. Keep yeah. keep it up. Keep them bang- bangers coming. Keep them up, yeah. Uh, how did you get in touch? How did like you and Patrick get in cu- involved, Patrick Toppin? Uh, yeah, Patrick. Uh, I think he found me on SoundCloud. You know, really, just randomly yeah. out of blue. Um, 
and I remember he commented on one of my like first ever releases. It was like mm. uh, a rubbish, like not rubbish edit, but like a really daft edit of uh, Promiscuous Girl. By <laughs> I need to hear this. Please send me it. <laughs> it's so it, it's really bad, but it's like my best song on SoundCloud because I think <laughs> it's just so bait and that and I don't know. It's like <laughs> it's but always a way. It's, it's a it's a groovy tune. <laughs> did, did, did Patrick play it? Um, I'm not too sure, you know. But he down he downloaded it and he uh, commented on it, and that's when I first like honestly I remember I was on my SoundCloud when it happened because I I literally just clicked off it and clicked back on again yeah. just to refresh or what have you, and I seen it and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's like the first he was the first person to pick me up and like recognize anything yeah. that I've I've done, and it was uh, it was really nice to come from someone from Newcastle as well, and mm. I was. I remember it happening and, and not long after he reached out to me, um, just saying that he'd listened to my, some, some of my songs and he really liked some of my music. And um, I literally got the message when I was working in a bar um, in Newcastle and I opened it and I was like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my manager at work and that, <laughs> like buzzing. I love that. It's he's he's such a nice guy as well. He's kind of like one of the. I would say he's in the UK. He's the biggest artist in the at the moment. Yeah, hands down. Like up there. He's with... such a personality as well. Like he's got, <laughs> like he's so sound, and he's he's one for the people. If yeah, you get he is no one hundred percent. Is which yeah. is great because you don't. You do get it, but you don't get it as personable as him. If mm. you know what I mean. There's not many artists that are that big that can sell thousands and thousands and thousands of tickets that is so like wants to be part of the community and kind of build it build the community. It's so nice yeah. to see. Yeah, it's what he's done for the scene in Newcastle and everywhere mm. to be honest has been so like so good and so positive and He's got such a positive energy about him, and he's yeah, yeah. I love it. I think I think he's just like, just loves it. Just <laughs> absolutely it. loves it. Yeah, it's so good to see. <laughs> like I, we've spoke a bunch, um, but we like I didn't hadn't like properly had a conversation with him until I got him on the podcast. Mm. And yeah, he's just like because obviously when you're in clubs, you don't really have a conversation with people. Like it's just like hi, bye, yeah. high yeah, five. Yeah, yeah tap on the arse and crack on and it's like <laughs> it's just but it's um yeah he's just dope such a nice dude he is he is and yeah the community is building with trick as well mm. yeah trick's gonna be the next biggest thing in the uk mm. without a shadow without it is gonna be it it's it is one of the biggest things already but it's gonna be huge yeah i think what he's done with it as well because he's like given so many people a leg up um, it's created these core core people associated with it, and like, yeah, it's it's not it's rare for a label to do that, isn't it? Yeah, there's not many labels nowadays that do it, um, mm. and there's not many labels that allow you to do it and also do your own thing. True, and and I think that's the thing that's really key is that patch with pat with trick, they're just they have their they're doing their own thing. And they don't care what you do outside of mm. Trick, if you know what I mean. Um, they just want artists to be themselves, which is so key because nowadays, I, I don't know about you and might be something that you come across or you might have come across already, but so many labels just want one sound and want what fits with their label. Mm. That's the reason why I started mine. I kind of sound like a broken record on this podcast. I say it all the time, but it's like <laughs> there's so many labels that are great labels, but they just don't want an artist to be an artist. They want an artist to fit with their sound. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's kind of good to build a brand, but it's not good to build an artist. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think if the artist wants to do, I don't know, because it's. It's so weird. There's so many labels that like help artists. You kind of almost have to be part of a label to kind of get a leg up nowadays to a certain extent, unless you build your own thing. 
but that yeah. just takes a lot longer. But you you need a leg up somehow, whether that's a banging mm. tune or a, or a record label. But how often does a bang like the there's not many massive records that that kind of give you the leg up that a label doesn't like. What was the last one? I guess Along Came Polly by Rebuke was like the last yeah. massive record. Yeah. That kind of, it could have been on, the fact that it was on Hot Creations was huge, but it wasn't the Hot Creations side of it that made him, made Rebuke massive. massive. It was the record. And then after that, before that was Cola. Cola, yeah. I was thinking as well, Joe Raw Cuts by Ketama. That just created him an artist. That made him an artist. Ketama's been around for years though. Yeah, yeah, but that like that one song, I don't, I don't know, know if that record. I, I don't know that record. I think it was big on um SoundCloud. Do you know, do you know oh, what? Okay. I think it might have been because I just used to smash it out and it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Ketama, I haven't I literally haven't heard that stuff for a while. Yeah, he's he's still he's What was still it called? Producing and stuff, isn't he? He's what was the track really called? Huge. Uh, raw cuts. Ah, oh, see, it's not on. Is it not? I can't see it on um, Spotify. Oh, I think it's because it's it's like a rap sample, uh, so I think okay. it's literally just yeah. on uh, SoundCloud. Yeah, on SoundCloud, it's got like a million. That's wild. Is, it's huge, isn't it? Oh yeah. no! So it, there's two uploads of it. One's got a million, and one's got two million. Smashing. Yeah, it's. So, like, I think with Trick, they just kind of allow people to do their own thing. And they're not like, yeah, you can't release on other records. Because there's some record labels that, like, the minute you start releasing on other people's record labels, they don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. Fuck you, people like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. What's the point? I, it's like... unless, unless you're paying someone a shit ton of money... Yeah, big uh, yeah, big advance or something. And releasing their music on a regular basis so that they're always in the pub. Because nowadays you have to release music so often. Well, you don't have to, but to kind of, unless you've had like, unless you release massive hits every time or you're a very well-established artist, you, yeah, have, to, yeah. you have to just release music because the more music you, the re you release, the more likely people are going to hear it and then you get booked for shows, et cetera, et cetera. Staying music relevant, isn't it? Like exactly. Music's just, a, as sad as it is, it's just a business card for us to get booked nowadays, which sucks because there's barely any mu money in music or in our scene anyway. But yeah. unless, yeah, unless you're getting big advance and they're like booking you for every show and they're like really investing in you as an artist, they, like you have to release on other labels. You have to have your fingers in all the pies. Otherwise. You, <laughs> <laughs> you do 100%. What's uh, obviously you're like still fresh and new to everything. Have you got like any like big goals or are you just like, whatever kind of comes yeah i don't know you know i've got a fair few goals for the next like f like for the next five years i'd i'd say that i wanted to i don't know oh, i said that i wanted to go in the next five years full time mm. with music so i think i'll probably be able to do that probably by the end of this year you'll hopefully be, you'll be full time by the end of this year yeah um and I also, to be fair, one of my big goals as well was getting on Animax Mini Mix. Oh, really? Have you? Did you do that? I've got it on Friday. Oh no way! That's amazing. I know. It's I'm so gassed. Like to be honest, I literally said like I'd have made it in my career if Animax knows who I am. <laughs> That's obviously such a my, like not a minor goal, but it is. It's a huge goal, I think, to me. <laughs> no, I think I think we all have different goals, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But what what you'll find maybe. Um, is it you'll reach this goal and you'll be like, okay, what's next? Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, mate. Like mini mix is huge. Yeah. I'm pushing for it. I've, I've started planning it. I've just got loads of bang bangers to put in. Have you not done it yet? No, I'm, I've nearly done it. It's like, like almost done. How I, long, I how long is it taking you it. to do? Um, a couple of hours. I did it on Ableton. I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't know if, 
start just cheating or not. No, it's not. That's what everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're Andy C. Did you hear the Andy C one years ago? They did. He did that live, and it was like a ridiculous amount of tracks just all in once. It's wild. How, yeah, like I've only got an RX2. Like I'd need like five decks yeah. or something. <laughs> how many? Um, how many records are in there? At the minute, about twenty-two. <sighs> That's amazing. It's not that bad. Not that bad, is it? <laughs> I've got a couple of them as well that are just like songs that are my unreleased songs, but just the vocals. Mm. You got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. Self promotion. Cheeky. No, definitely. That's cool. So what else? What else is um, on the list of goals? If you you don't have to tell me if you don't want though. No, no. I know some people um, get a bit nervous. It's <laughs> too shy. <laughs> um. So what were I going to say? Yeah, like in um lockdown mm. last year i'd started writing an album oh cool um and it's like so different to anything i've put out before well to be fair it's quite similar to like do you disappear that track and yeah. that meditate ep yeah, yeah. it's that more sort of chilly breaky vibe okay that i'm going for um and yeah i like pretty much finished an album but over this past year but it's like it's i don't know it's just a bit of like a music dump at the minute so mm. my goal is to make it more of an art piece yeah um and have it out within the next like couple of years, hopefully, as like a big album as well, yeah. and hopefully get like a decent deal with it and what have you. That'd be dope. Do you want to, what? Do you want to do major or do you want to do indie? Um, probably like a big indie one. Ninja Tune. I was. That's the exact one <laughs> I was had in my mind. Yeah. That on mute. Yeah, mute's cool. Mm. Really cool. Ninja's the one though, isn't it? It is. It's the OG, isn't it? Yeah, the Tisha on that. Tisha signs all of her stuff. She's yeah, so, she has. Yeah, she's that killing. Sick as well. She's killing. Like she's killing it. Her music's so good as well. Just like, there's a few people that are just like, I'm like every time. Tisha stuff's amazing. Girl called mm. Made in Paris. I don't know if you know her. Who? Sorry. Made in Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. Like. I didn't get that. Oh, hi Siri. <laughs> 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 how did yeah, that I, start i don't know that's so weird did you, is it because you said sick maybe yeah. maybe can't understand my horrible accent, <laughs> yeah. accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no album i've never i've i've always wanted to do an album mm. and for years said i'm gonna do an album and like written a load of album records yeah. And then never done anything with them. Because I'm like, it's not the right time. Yeah. And then I was going to do one for next year. But it's definitely not the right time next year for me. And no. for me as an artist, like, I feel like we need to get out of coronavirus and back to normal. And then like, because if I was to do an album, I want to do like a proper world tour. I want it like properly done. And yeah. I want to like build in other territories before I do that because I want every show to be fucking amazing and it has to be right, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. Like at first I was like so keen to just like dump all my music mm. into it and because I was making like loads of the same style and I, it kind of all fitted together. And then the more I did it, the more I was like progressing with my production as well because mm. obviously I'm still quite new to it. I started pro producing in 2019, 2018. Oh, damn. 2018. Fresh. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I don't know. It's just like I'm constantly growing now as an artist and it, it, yeah. I thought it was the right thing to do at the start. Um, but as I've grown this past year, it's sort of grown with me and grown yeah. apart from me. So I'm trying to, like, work towards, like, making it more of a, like, a, come to, like, a piece of art to come together rather than it just be, like, a music dump. <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> it, yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think also, like you said, like, being newer to production you kind of like when you're four or five years into production you're kind of like learning so much new stuff and so always much. and like new genres and kind of new ways to do things and sometimes you're like you're right you're right a record in like four years time you'll still love it like there'll be one record that you're like this is i still love this record but then yeah. there'll be like with that, there's going to be like 30 other records that you're like, I'm so glad I didn't put that out just purely because of just like 
evolve like evolution in in writing music is just like amazing and you do get much better as as the years go on mm. um but i think yeah. the whole artist album thing is i think everyone should do it yeah it definitely it can just i don't know it could create a whole different fan base and a whole different yeah. side to you that your your own fans anyway don't see yeah and i think a lot of a lot of people and a get like slated for doing it if it's like a different style or what have you but i don't think i don't know i don't think it should be like that i think it should be that you should be able to be diverse as an artist yeah it's really tough because i can't who was i talking to about this i think it was literally last week oh i had a girl called lp giobi i don't know if you've heard of her oh no i'm not too sure she's like killing it in america at the moment Sick. Um, but like she does she has like this she has like a charity foundation for like uh getting new women into production and things like that. she does like loads of shit for like women in in the, the house music and she's great oh, rate that she's fucking great you should check her out like oh, you really? might you might not like her music she's like more on the commercial side of things um but she's i in, like everything <laughs> <laughs> she's a banging production she's banging at producing but she's also an amazing pianist um uh, and just great oh, but we were talking about um like i think it was her anyway but uh we were talking about having to stick to like one thing and one genre and you kind of have to in house and techno like because it's such a snobby fucking scene and like <laughs> I struggle with it massively because like one record that I like, let's say for instance, my last record run run. And then the EP that I just released on needed pains are completely different. But as yeah, I'd I, say you're quite diverse. As yeah. Artists. But I think, I think you have to, as long as, you, as long as I don't really like the people that listen to your music and I don't really like calling them fans, but yeah. the people, cause it just sounds weird, doesn't it? But My like, fans. they're like, it sounds American as fuck. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to all the Americans listening. <laughs> um, but it's almost like you you have to get the, the, you have to present it well and you have to kind of talk people through it because otherwise you get put into like one genre and you have to do that for the rest of your career because you're going to alienate all your fans. But yeah. I think if you do it right, because I that, that happened to me at the beginning of my career. Like I signed to Dirty Bird and I was known as a Dirty Bird artist. Um, and it took me so long to get out of that, if you know what I mean. Oh, I lost you. There we go, we're back. Sorry, I think that's, I'm on my connection. It's all right, don't worry. Um, <sighs> and it took me ages to kind of get out of that, of like, you're this artist. You're you're yeah. only related to this label. Um, but you're, you're 100% right. I think artists should be able to just do what the fuck they want. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like being associated with a label is a good thing. Um, totally. But when you've not liked that label anymore or you want to develop your sound, it's it's not anymore a good thing, is it? <laughs> I think I think it depends if Yeah. If if you I think it's all down to you as the artist on how you kind of communicate what you're doing. Because I think a lot of people just be like, here's a new record deal with it <laughs> but uh, but we don't we're not like that in life if you know what i mean it, like we, n none of us like change really like we don't like changing anything if you know what i mean if like the road layout's different we all get a bit fucking weirded out and going what the fuck's going on here like it just we like to have the same and yeah. i think when an artist even I get it when like one of my like favorite artists releases something really weird. I'm like, fucking hell, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just about communicating and it, I think explaining what the process is. And then I think people get it. I, I agree. I think if, if, if you just do it and just drop it on people, everyone gets a bit like 
Whoa. Bit anxious, Calm don't down. they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was it. It was Justin J that I was talking about it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because he's like wild and will just release fucking anything. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't know how you do that. Because I couldn't do that. He's like on no. another extreme. And I love it. I love the way he, we were kind of talking about how we do it different ways. Mm. Um, but I think you're good, mate. You're going to be, you're, it's it's great to see. Like you're going to be smashing. I, I hope so. You, you <laughs> 100% will be. Like I've got a very good feeling about it for you. And it's, it's amazing to see. That's lush to hear as well. I think it's just nice to see like, fresh people that are dope in the scene and it's not the fucking same old <laughs> if you know what i mean like i think the uk is classic for it just yeah. booking the same artist over and over and over again and like i know i don't tour much here but i take note on what's happening in the scene and i'm just like fucking hell people like need to book different people like we need to kind of find some fresh artists out there that yeah, they might not sell as many tickets to start with, if you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. but that's that's what you need because in four or five years' time, they're going to be selling your club out, and yeah. you're going to have dope relationships, and you're going to be like smashing it, all of you. Um, so it's it's great. I think I think it's much needed, and I think there's been some real like dope artists coming out of lockdown, which has been interesting. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. Like I didn't even mean it to be locked down that sort of sorted yeah. sorted out my career, but it kinda has been in a way. Um I don't know, it's I was on furlough for the start of lockdown mm. and I just bought a book and actually just pure got into like actually getting into the nitty gritty of production and yeah. um figuring out like the depths of I don't know, what I can produce and mm. what I'd like to make. And yeah, it just got me grafting a bit more. And I think that's the same for a lot of artists. Like you can tell there's been a shift in yeah. the in the sound that's been released since last year. Yeah. Um, I think also what's happened is a lot of people have haven't been going to clubs, obviously. Um, but so they're not hearing the music as much. So they're actually just doing what they want to do and not copying as much. There's a lot of shit music out there that still gets released, but it's not just the same old yeah. getting released. And I think that's what's keeping kind of things a little bit fresher. And radio's, radio's been a huge part of lockdown. Massive. And I think Massive. it's like the only community that you can kind of all be part of. Um, yeah. Yeah, in my first radio play, um, apart from when Hi played me on a essential mix back in February, mm. um, all my other radio plays have been in lockdown. Yeah. And it's like kind of wild to this, just get all this and not be able to actually see it though, like in a club or anything. So it, I'm going to go from like playing in like clubs of, to like, of like 50 people who are here to see somebody else to then see me instead. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. And yeah, I guess it's going to be weird because you're going to be playing in front of big crowds. There's but, no transition that I've had. No. I've, 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 I've played as a resident and loved it. Mm. Um, I've done a few headline shows, but they've not sold as well. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I feel like everyone's just going to be keen to buy tickets for anything at the minute. So it doesn't really Every, matter. Everything's <laughs> selling sell. out. Everything's selling out, isn't it? They're just yeah. like, everyone wants to fucking rave, which I get is great. But you're, this is the, this is your time to just like grow and build. It's perfect. Like it's, I'm, I'm proper happy for you, mate. Proper happy for you. Um, Thank you. Before we wrap this up, how can people follow you and all of that? Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Instagram, it's a uh, Meggy Ward, M E G G Y Ward, um, and Twitter is the same and do you use twitter a bit it's all right i gave up on it during lockdown yeah there's a lot of cancel culture on it oh, it kills me it's really it, it's draining in it yeah I, I, I've, I've sort of like my uh timeline at the minute on it is quite 
good. It's just full of like stupid tweets and that's yeah. so it's fine. But when you get like a big thing happening, it's always on Twitter and it's always just a bit like well, like yeah. the Meghan and Harry thing and what have you. What oh what with the interview? Yeah, yeah. That was just all over Twitter and uh, I didn't know was... anything about that. I kind of I've like since look i for like probably about two years actually, I stopped watching news and I was like yeah. tapping out, can't deal with it. And then lockdown, I was like, no, I just no, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But I unfollowed like on Twitter for some reason. I was following like three thousand people. Mad. And, it, and at the beginning of lockdown, I like whittled it down to like three hundred people and was like, okay. And then it still was just like, nah. So I just think, yeah, things creep in, don't they? I just tweet and run, just <laughs> just like tweet and piss off and don't open Twitter for a week and just do it. Yeah, it's not the best. It's when something interesting will happen and all what have you in the media. Yeah. It's sometimes quite interesting. Did you hear about funny. Bristol? Well, no. Did you hear about the riots in Bristol last night? Oh, yeah. What happened? Mate, it's fucking wild. So obviously they were protesting about the the bill that the uh, government want to put in about like giving the police a little bit more power to kind of intervene during protests oh yeah yeah um but then yeah i think there was like five thousand people protesting in bristol last yesterday which is cool like i'm all for that um and then about 500 people there's there's a police station called bridewell police station and uh about 500 people started smashing it up and burning all the police car they burnt like two or three police vans down put three cops in hospital like just fucking idiots mad yeah it's just like so i've not i've, I've not opened news i've been asleep <laughs> <laughs> it's wild i no, just don't get it crazy. it's like you're actually you're actually making the whole point of the government to like give the police more power and that's what you're protesting against <laughs> And you're just like giving them a reason to give them more power. And it's like, yeah, it's sad though. Cause obviously like something like that's going to make people angry and make people want to lash out, but it's not the right way of doing it. Is it? Oh, well, it never works. Sad. Never. It does. never works never because does. there was, if, if all 5,000 were like smashing everything up that they weren't, it was like a peaceful protest, like, which is the whole point of a peaceful protest. If you know what I mean? Like they did mm -hmm. it in London or they were, they were doing it all around the country. But then you just always, you always get a dickhead, don't you? Yeah. It's always a dickhead. And it, and it takes a couple to then people follow the crowd and then... It's easy. It's so easy because you just, there's no accountability when there's a group of you, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, it's it's the root of a lot of things, that, isn't it? Like being yeah. a member of a group and that de-individualization of somebody. It's so sad. It's, yeah. Don't understand it, just, it. You lose your own identity. It's really sad, isn't it? I bet there must be so many people that do that get caught up in that shit, and yeah. like it ruins their lives. They get arrested, they get put in prison, and it's like ruins their lives. And all they were doing was just like following, following the trend, <laughs> mm, following a cause. Yeah, that they fit, they may believe in it, but they just didn't act out on it in the right way. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? We all have a choice, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah, you, you don't need trust. to smash a policeman's face in to uh, <laughs> <laughs> making no points there. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna work, is it? Uh, what have you got coming up music-wise? Oh, I've got um, another release coming out. I need one. Cool. Um, Whose label's that? It's it's affiliated with Stress Records. I thought it was because yeah. the, the like artwork looks similar to Stress. I love yeah. all the guys at Stress. Well, I know Luke. I speak to Luke occasionally. Yeah, Luke's the one I speak to as well. He's dope. Yeah, he's lush, yeah. Stress so is lush. doing some wicked stuff, actually, and they're pulling through some, like, dope new artists. They are. They're building a nice little community. team as, community as well, yeah. yeah. Nice little family. No, that's great. Mm. I like that because they are... It's not headed by, like, a big DJ. Mm. So they're literally just releasing music they're just a record label which yeah. is fucking amazing yeah 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 it's kind of, it's nice actually to be fair to be part of that because mm. I, 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 I like the idea of being associated with a label owned by 
an artist, but I don't want to be, a, I don't know, like specifically affiliated with that then. Yeah. In no, the I, future. I, I totally, it's what we were saying just a minute ago. Yeah. Really. yeah it's like, literally. it's great. But with my label, that's why I haven't signed anyone yet because I'm like, I want to, I want the label to be at a point where they, we can do their music justice as yeah. a label, not as being associated to me, if that makes sense. Yeah. I want to help with touring and I want to bring people on tour who I sign and stuff like that, but I don't want, I want them to be their own artist. Yeah. It's so yeah, important. Yeah. It's so there's, important. Yeah. There's different ways of doing it in there, but that's, I do like that idea as well. Yeah. So, sure. so you got a record coming out of that. Anything else? Yeah. Or are you just working on new, new beats? Um, working on new beats to be fair. Yeah. I've, I, d I don't know really. I don't really know my plans. I'm just going to wing it for the next <laughs> couple of years. <laughs> Mate, you are doing a great job of winging it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, as well, this song that's coming out, it's going to have me on the vocals. Oh, cool. So do you sing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it you speaking a northern accent? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> All right, that's All right, sick. Doc. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's like I, I'm trying to just say random stuff into the mic and like, sort of spit bars but not spit bars <laughs> just say just say rhymes you're gonna you're gonna be like the new like like rapper in the uk you're gonna like give up house music and be like a grime artist from newcastle <laughs> <laughs> do you know slow tie yeah you're like the newcastle version of slow tie <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking more blackpool grime media have you seen that <laughs> no what's that <laughs> I haven't heard that. Oh, search <laughs> when you in your spare time. Search uh, Sophie Aspin gets okay. pard oh, is on. It, <laughs> is it classic? Full grime. <laughs> BGM. It's called BGM. Okay, I check that one out. It's uh, what's her name? Ah, oh, Millie B. Millie B. Millie B. Yeah, if you don't know, S I'm M to the B. Uh, send me send me a link after. I will do. <laughs> I check that out. That's great. Um, and when's your, have you got a show booked in first or your first show for coming out of lockdown? Yeah, I've got a few that aren't confirmed yet. Um, but one looking like it's going to be in Bristol. Oh, really don't, close. when? Um, when? Yeah. It's a, it's the 26th of June, but they said they might push it back or what have you. Because Whereabouts? It's a, like a one-off festival thing. Oh, cool. Love Saves it's the like Day. It's I think it might be that, yeah. If it was a club show, let me know, because I live near Bristol. Oh, do you? Yeah. I'm not going to Love Saves the Day, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've had another inquiry for Bristol as well, actually. I think it's... Let me find what it's called. They never replied to me, actually, so it might not be the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, I won't be able to find it this quick, but um, it's, a, it's a club in Bristol. I think it's called, like, something 32 or something. I'm not too sure. 32. Fact. What is that in Bristol? Basement 45. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it might be that. I used to work behind the bar there years ago. No way. Yeah. But let if let me know if you if you do are ever in Bristol, I I'll, I'll come. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm like I'll let you know. 30 minutes away. I should be there this summer. Like I, I love Bristol. I, I mean, I've never been, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that city. Never been yeah, there, but <laughs> it is one of the best cities in the UK. Yeah, I'm biased, like, but it's great. All my friends that live there and that, or what have you, or have moved there, they love it. Yeah, it's banging. It's like it's kind of like Manchester mm. to a certain extent, um, but a little so, bit, a little bit more like hippie. Yeah, yeah, I get that vibe. Yeah. It's like Brighton in a sense then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but Brighton's still got that like London side of it where it's like yeah. like biz like they're like we like, like I'm just not really into it. But <laughs> Bristol's like proper I don't know, Bristol's weird cuz you got like a really you got the, like the really rich area that like no, they just go to like shit pubs. And then you got everything else. And it's like, everything else is pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> There's a cool culture in Bristol. Cool culture. That's Some cool. Some great music's come from there as well. Yeah, they're quite they're quite big on their drum and bass and stuff as well, though, aren't Huge. they? Huge, yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I was like, 
everyone I went to school with like loved drum and bass and I didn't like it when I was growing up. I was like, did you not? I was like house and techno only. And I would try and convert all my friends to like listen to house and techno and it would just never happen. They were like, <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then they all started like they, everyone turned like 18 and wanted to go to raves in Ibiza and we eventually got them to the dark side. But, um, yeah, I like that. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yeah. After right. a long time. <laughs> right, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. Thanks so much um, for being on. And it's been a pleasure. No, nah, thank you very much. Um, Meg, Maggie Ward, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, Meg Ward on Facebook. And yeah, that's all the platforms that I can think of. Sweet. And TikTok, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be posting some quality content yeah, and dancers. Of and course. Love you. <laughs> and, and recipes. Come on. Yeah. Get that get that veg, veggie recipe on. Oh, I'm excited to see that cooking show. Oh yeah, uh, it's gonna go on YouTube. Uh, I don't know when, but soon, I think. Sick. Yeah. Right. Keep safe. Let me know if yeah. you need anything. Thank you so much. Keep safe. It's see been you soon. Lush. Bye, mate. Take care. See you later. Ciao. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please share it with your mates, and your gran, and your mum, and your dad, or whoever. Um, also give us little comments in the review section and yeah keep safe see you next time